Welcome back to Site Tech Intermountain Earthworks training videos. I wanted to put out a video on a new update that came out on 2.17, 2.17. It came out a couple weeks ago, and I wanted to show you one really neat feature that I like in this. It's called the 3D line option that's going to give you different options to deal with 3D line work. Now, what I've got set up right here is the 3D line work for a project. It's in my design here under my job setup called uh, 3D Line Work Utilities. In here, this is 3D Line Work that I have set up for an excavator, which is underground utilities. But what I'm gonna show you after I show you this section is probably the neatest part of the 3D Line Work option is to be able to use it for dozers, graders, um, even the excavators, but not just necessarily for just underground utilities. You can use it for cutting slopes off of existing design line work, like a sidewalk or a slope or off of the edge of a design that ends, whatever you need to do in the field. But what this feature does is it gives us a new icon on the screen right here on the right side that says it's a 3D box with kind of two lines on it. And you'll notice that I'm on a traditional 3D line work model that normally you get that blue box on the right side that indicates, hey, pick a line. And that's why I don't have any cut fill right now. So what I can do is right where the excavator is sitting, I've got a deep sewer line and then a water line. If you click this 3D line box on the right, there's a screen that comes up that says choose a 3D line for guidance. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and I'm going to pick the, the sewer line that's right underneath the excavator. This goes right along the lines of the other stuff that you've done with it. But now you have an option right here for horizontal guidance, level guidance off of that, which you would normally do for underground utilities. You've got guidance slope and dual slope. So you can actually pick that elevated line, even if it climbs and falls, to actually do a breaking cross slope off of it, a V, a guidance slope, or level. So, for example, we'll go ahead and do um, guidance slope. So this screen right here gives me the ability to give that a slope. Uh, let's put in maybe a 6% just to show you. You can do a plus or a minus to pitch it either way. And you still have the same options that you did before where you can do a surface width. I'll go 10 feet. I can extend it five feet on each end. These are all the same, but let me show you when I go back to my main screen right here, and then let me sink the excavator bucket down to it. So here we go. Now you can see that it's actually got a slope to it. I know that this is not something that you would necessarily use as much for 3D line work uh, underground. You would traditionally pick a level surface for an excavator right here. So I would leave this kind of traditional and go ahead and start digging that, right? Put my vertical offsets in. But let's say that I was cutting a slope off of a side of a pond. Let's go ahead and look at what that looks like. Let's take this for example. Let's say I was cutting a pond in over here and you can see that I, I do have a defined line to actually follow on the model. But let's say someone asked us to change the slope on the edge of this model. Just giving you examples here. What you could do is go to that 3D line right there and actually pick the top of the slope you can pick the line right there, and then you could give it a cross section right there. And let's put in maybe a 250% there, and you can see that I can switch it left or right. Let's keep it to the right right there. And we'll go ahead and set that at, uh, we'll go 10 feet on that, same thing. Now I've got a slope right there that does, it's actually steeper than the original slope that's there. I still see my line work. But now I can just take actual design lines, design slopes, whatever it is that I need, and I can actually go ahead and cut that as needed. Here's the one that I wanted to show you the most that I think would really help out is, let's take a situation like this where I've got a TBC back of curb line right here. On this model, you can see the only sidewalk is just right in front of this building right here. But let's take a job site like this where we've got an actual TBC line, an elevated line, but I wanna actually build a sidewalk in on the back side of this right here. What you can do is actually use any 3D line that's elevated on your job site. It doesn't have to be exported out because this model isn't exported as just 3D line work. This is an actual design. I want to build a sidewalk behind this. That 3D option shows up here on the right side of my screen. I can go ahead and click that and I can come up here and I can pick that top back of curb line right there. And I could actually build a sidewalk right off the back of that. So what I'm going to do is pick the uh, guidance slope option. 
So we're going to go ahead and put a 2% on that for a traditional curb. What you got to pay attention to is the same thing where you don't know which way the line is going. So if I do a 2% down that way, you would think the way the grader is facing that it would be doing 2% down, but that arrow on that line was coming back towards the grader. So the 2% actually needs to be this way based on the which way that line is going. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and then I'm going to give it a 20 foot which if you do that, it's not going to be 20 feet to the side of that line. It's 20 feet from the center, so it's only going to be 10 feet on each side. So with the grader right there, I'm actually going to go do, I'm going to do 30. And then I don't need to get an extension or anything. So now you can see arrows going that way, surface on both sides there. And I can go ahead and change to a cross-section view. And this is what it looks like on my cross-section. You can see it's pitching up to the left. And I can go ahead and cut in a curb now. So I can go ahead and turn my autos on. And I can go ahead and start running along the side of this right here and actually cut that in. So if I had a sidewalk that I needed to build out an extension on or do a different type of a cross-section, you name it, any 3D line, you have the option to do this, to put a V in it. If you had a line that uh, went through the middle of a project and you needed to create a V ditch off of it or a crown line for a road, Whatever it is, this option is new from Trimble, and it's a pretty neat feature to be able to give you, like I said, these different options. When you select the line, you can give it a level, a sloping, or a break, or just do a horizontal offset from it, just like you would at the very top right there. So apply this to whatever you would think would help most on your job site. So hopefully this helps some of you start thinking a little bit outside the box on how this can help you with either your dozers, grader, excavators, skid steer, whatever it is. 3D line work can now be manipulated a little bit different as you needed. So thanks for watching this video from Site Ticket or Mountain on the new version 2.17 of Earthworks and using 3D lines to build what you need.